Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use darken blend mode in Photoshop to add natural mood and contrast to an interior image. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Let's start off by jumping into Lightroom. As you might be able to tell, since I only have 10 exposures here that we're gonna play with, this really is not that complicated of a shot. And I might surprise you with this as well, but there was not a single, not one flash fired in any of these exposures. Everything you're seeing is utilizing 100% natural light. We'll start with the first exposure. This is with the lights on. This was more of just taking an initial shot just to see how it looked in camera. As you saw in the thumbnail photo, my end goal was to really showcase a lot of mood and natural contrast in the photo, utilizing just this wall of natural light coming from the right side of the frame. We're getting a good amount of that moody feel right off the bat, even with the lights on, it's not bad, but I wanted to do everything in my power to kind of dial it up. So step one, turn off the interior lights. Next, I just made a couple other tweaks to some of the furniture. I think it was mostly the ottoman there right in front of the fireplace. And yeah, the staging is, a little different than what you might normally expect. As you can tell though, the chairs in the foreground, they're not centered and it didn't really bother me that much. It might be bothering you, but let's, we're, we're not gonna go into the staging and all that stuff. I know that is kind of a, a big thing when it comes to taking interior photos, but I, I won't get into the, you know, long winded reasons why, but I just, long story short, decided to leave the staging as is. As you may be able to tell from images four to five, for one, Camera settings and lighting wise, nothing changes except you'll notice that the some of the shadows are a little darker. And the reason being is because of image number seven. Now, why I was squinting and making this stupid face while I was taking the shot, I don't know. My only guess is that I'm normally used to making this face whenever I'm firing a flash. So maybe my instinct was to squint my eyes expecting to be blasted in the face with light. Again, I don't know why. Anyway, but therein lies the secret how I'm darkening some shadows. I just have a pretty large plastic sheet to flag any of the natural window light that was coming from the left side of the frame. To give you an even clearer idea of why I was doing it this way, I'll jump to some cell phone video that I took on site. Now, as you can see, the camera's set up over there and first thing you might notice when it comes to light, yeah, we have this huge gigantic wall of light that would initially come from the right side of the frame. As you may be able to tell, most of the lighting already is coming from right to left. It already is coming from this basically two story wall of windows that we're getting in the living room. And you can tell that by the shadows that are being cast by the table and chairs on the floor. But in my opinion, we were getting a little bit too much from the other side of the house that would kind of fill in some of those shadows. It would make the shadows a little bit lighter than I would like. It was kind of killing the mood. Now, because the front side of the house also had a massive amount of windows, I just didn't have a massive flag or plastic sheet to block out the natural light that was coming from the front side of the house. So instead of taking the time of trying to piece together some of these plastic sheets and make one gigantic flag, which would have taken up more time than I would have liked, I decided to use the one sheet that I had on me and flag different areas knowing ultimately I would combine those in Photoshop using darken mode. And by doing that, it ultimately gives the effect and look as if I did have a gigantic black sheet blocking out most, if not all the light coming from the front side of the house. And I'll show you how I did it. Jumping from image seven to eight. Yeah, again, I'm just I'm moving to different spots purposely blocking any of the natural light that's coming from the left side of the frame. I even go up to the catwalk on the second floor to try my best to block any of the lights that's coming from the left side of the frame that might possibly be hitting the items on the shelf that's to the left of the fireplace. But before we throw them into Photoshop, I need to do my mandatory tweaks in Lightroom, adjusting highlights. I know the white balance in this scene with the natural light was uh, color temperature of 5100 with a tint of plus 39. And all I'm doing is just some fairly basic adjustments to the highlights and shadows. Clarity, I'm gonna bump up to, let's go for 20. Vibrance and saturation, I just, out of habit, have been bumping it up to 12. And then we'll do the lens correction adjustments, or here we go, the transform adjustments. And guys, I, I, I've said this before in videos, and I'm gonna repeat this over and over again. You can flash an image to kingdom come, you can get the exposure right, you can get the lighting right, make all your beautiful adjustments with highlights and shadows, you can do all that. But if your verticals are not straight in a photo where they should be, 
and or the camera is not level. It is the biggest reveal that that image was taken by kind of an amateur. So please make sure that your camera is level and your verticals look straight and vertical. And here's how I do it in Lightroom. Um, I, I've said this before, I really try my best to use the cabinetry as a uh, as, as the guideline to make everything straight and level. And the reason being is most cabinet installers are meticulous about stuff being straight and level. So you're in a pretty safe spot if you use those as a point of reference when doing these corrections. Okay, so I did that to image number five, which was the first image that I used where I was flagging some of the light. And I'm just going to simply copy and paste this on all the other exposures where I was flagging light in the different parts of the room. And I'll highlight these six exposures and bring them into Photoshop. All the layers are now in a single file in Photoshop. We are going to reverse these. So I have the, the first ones at the bottom. And then I'm gonna hold Option and on the eyeball at the bottom. So that's the only one that's showing right now. So let's look at the difference between what, 1520 and 1521. Oddly enough, I'm not sure if I flagged anything in 1521. Now, easiest way to find out is I'm gonna change the blend mode of this one. Instead of normal, I'm gonna change it to darken. And if you don't know, here, we're, we're gonna use, see there's a subtle difference. You see something here right below this uh, desk here between these two chairs, or the table between the two chairs. Something different happening. I mean, that's probably not purposeful. It's I'm probably just simply blocking some light coming from the left side of the frame just by standing in a different position. Let's demonstrate that, here we go. So here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna try to explain this as simply as possible. When you change a blend mode from normal to darken, what you're doing is you're telling Photoshop to only show the pixels in the top visible layer, the one that you've selected as darken, you're telling it to only show the pixels that are darker than the layer below it. Now, if I just leave this layer, I'm gonna change this from normal to darken. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting the exact look that I want, but uh, as you can probably tell, there's a big problem. There's a moron in the photo. We're gonna add a layer mask and we're just gonna use a soft brush gonna change the hardness of the brush all the way down to zero. Gonna change it to black at 100% because clearly I don't want any of my stupid face or the flag in the shot. And I think from there, yeah, we got rid of most, uh, I think he got rid of all of me. There we go, perfect. Now, if I turn this layer on and off, you see exactly what I did. With it off, some of those areas are brighter. And when I turn it on, we've now darkened some of those spaces that are darkened with me holding that flag. But now I'm invisible in there because I have used a mask to remove myself. Let's do the same thing in this layer. Uh, we're gonna change the blend mode on this one to darken. Now, same thing has happened, but obviously the pixels that are darker in this one versus the one below is obviously the flag or the plastic sheet there, but now we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna remove it using a 100% brush, still keeping the brush pretty soft. Now the flag is gone, we don't have to deal with it, but let's turn this on and off. Now, this one's minimal. Not a whole lot is done. You gotta really look hard for <laughs> to even see any effect, but there's still some difference there. And the point of this is that on its own, holding the one flag or the one sheet on one exposure, it's not gonna make a world of difference. But when you start adding them up, and I'll show you here, it, it makes quite a bit of difference. You will see in the final image when we blend these items together. Now this one's kind of unique. Clearly, I'm just doing this for the items there on the shelf, but I obviously don't want any of the flag in the shot. Now I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm gonna hold Option, Add Mask, and I'm gonna do this in reverse. I'm gonna change the brush to white and I'm gonna paint in the pixels that are darker because of the flag. Again, it's not a huge drastic difference. Let's turn this on and off. I mean, minimal. Oh, look, we're getting a little bit of that flag showing up here and we're gonna remove that. Again, just trying to keep this as natural as possible. 
Now, for the most part, that's pretty much it. So let's let's just do a quick before and after. So this is before, after, before, after, before and after. Not a huge difference, I'll give you that, but there is a difference. And this little difference, it just, like I said before, just kind of dials up that moody feel and atmosphere to this room. We're really, again, showcasing most of the light in this scene coming from right to left. Well, that'll do it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, make sure to drop me one of these. Feel free to follow me on Instagram, at Matthew A. Photo. If you have a question about anything that I went over, you're more than welcome to leave it in the comments. I will try my best to get to it. Uh, clearly, I'm not able to get to all of them, but again, I'll, I'll give the old college try. If you made it all the way here to the end, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to watch. That'll do it for this one. We'll see you on the next video.